following video is presented by Audience on Demand. Programmatic solutions from Vivaki. For more information, go to audienceondemand.de. Good morning, everyone. Um, I, I must say, I just reflect, I'm getting worried. Uh, uh, Germany is Germany. Uh, I'm from Sweden, we look up to Germany. Uh, uh, and, and people are, and I said, when do we start? Well, we'll start half past, where we're always late. People stroll in like it was Spain or something, right? What's happening? I mean, if we start half past, we start half past. Now my 20 minutes is cut down to 10. But I'm going to do like you do. I'm going to run a little bit over. So let's see if we can get some energy into the room here. It's morning and, and, and see. It's a lot of... So if we start with a small exercise, the ones that are listening, if you start, if you could raise your left hand. It's a little bit tricky. Left hand. Everyone, everyone raise their left hand. See, there is a lot of volunteers in the room. I could see that. I could see that. But I always want, I want someone to be my help, assistant in some way. What, what's your name with the computer there? What's your name? Hans. Hans. Good. Hans, I, could you just be my reference point? So, you know, if it follow and if things go fast or if it's too, if it makes sense or so? Yes, sure. Good. Hans, where are you working? Trade mob. Yeah. Yeah, okay, anyway. Yeah, that's a work too. Yeah. yeah. You could, yeah. Do you get paid? No. Uh, anyway, so as you can see, a little bit back and forth. Uh, down in the box, the, there are translators there. I, some of you are using that. I, I was in Minsk, that is in, in, in Belarus, uh, and it's a different country to be sure, and, and there were translators there. I had a presentation. And this was most probably one of the biggest guy on earth. He was huge, the guy that was uh, interpreting and translating. So I asked him, well, what should I think about? That was my first time. And he looked at me. Speak slow and no jokes. <laughs> and I looked at it and said, I can't do that. Why? I don't know. I, I speak fast and I joke. Tell the jokes beforehand. No, I can't do that either. I mean, I don't know what jokes I'm going to tell. Then it won't work. So I don't know how the Belarusian guys, I hope these guys will wait. Now they have the interesting thing to translate what I said about the translators. So they're talking about themselves in German now. What we're Anyway, this is getting confusing. Yeah, anyway, that was not the subject where I'm here. Uh, I'm coming from Adform. Um, just another check, now you know. How many in here do know who, what Adform is? Good. The ones that didn't know it, ask the ones before. Or, or, anyway, there's a lot of them. And then second, last question. And now, how many are here from the publisher side? Would say you're publishers. Okay. Media agencies. Yeah? And CMOs, marketeers, marketing. What the rest do? Why are you here? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Anyway, so I'm going to talk about bringing bringing. I will have to look at the slides also. Bringing brand advertising to the programmatic area. I was in a panel discussion last week, and. Um, the theme of the conference were shift in the market. There is a wind of change blowing in the industry, the facilitator said. And this guy from a Danish publisher, he was sitting and listening, and after a while he said, I don't think there is a wind blowing in the industry and changing. It's a fucking thunderstorm. And he talked from his perspective as a publisher that he was, we lost. Uh, our fundamental business is changing. We don't have control of our data. There is mobiles. There is uh, none in, no one in the house understands our business model. Uh, the print thing is going down. Online is going up. He was just said, this is a massive change. And I think also, and my main point in my presentation is that the buy side has been sorting out a lot over the last years, becoming more and more sophisticated. Now, the publisher side is a little bit behind. So I will direct this uh, and a lot of wise things or point out some challenges for the publisher side. But again, it's the main source of inventory for us. So everyone in the industry do need to understand how to drive this. So it, also from the agency side and from the brand people to understand the complexity and some of the challenges. I don't have any numbers in my presentation, not even a single percentage sign. I don't have any graphs in here either. I think there are people after me that will cover that in a very good way. So I hope it will be trustworthy without numbers. And I don't have the answers to a lot of the things that I talk about. So it's a privilege of being first. Yeah. So mobile, uh, uh, let's see here then. Uh, let's do like this. Yeah. 
I only have one slide, so it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, there it is. Oh, there it came. I just, do I have to go over here every time I switch? I could manually go over and ask you. Anyway, yeah, so here I am. Um, I'm the chief operating officer of Adform, which means that I'm involved in everything uh, and nothing at the same time. Um, so, looking at this, and the difference between the first slide is, let's see here, there is a pointer. No. Anyway, there is a logo up there called ACO, and there is a Mondelez down here. Uh, Mondelez is not that big, but the interesting with those two, and I just took two brands, they have clearly articulated that half of their entire marketing budget across everything, half of it will go on online. And why is that interesting? These two companies don't sell anything online. They have very little presence on their own. They have a web page, of course, but they don't sell anything. So what this is, is brand money. And when that happens, it's a different ball game. We've seen retargeting, we've seen performance, but now when the brand money comes into play, it's a different ball game. When significantly money shifted from TV into online, it is a different ball game. So it's putting on pressures on the technology, on the ecosystem, and on the performance. This is two examples, there are many more. There's a shift and a trend that is clear. So, the problem is, a little bit for publishers in here, and it, that these guys are eating the entire cake. It's enormous how the Facebook and also Google, is anyone Google, working from Google in here? Oh yeah. You're good people. You are. You don't, yeah, you're good. It's two. Did you see how they, they were just like, yeah. You should go, yeah, I work for Google. Yeah, right, but you don't know what I'm going to say about Google here, but I'm not. Anyone from Facebook in here also? We had an ex-Facebook guy. They're, oh, are you the only one? Scott, you're not from Facebook. You, you quit. He left Facebook. Oh, it uh, doesn't mean he logged out from Facebook. He just quit the company. Anyway, so, um, but again, the way these guys are eating the full cake, they are. And the reason why they do that is because they can provide something uh, when it comes to automation, when it comes to first-party data, uh, and then you could discuss about trust and reliability and all those things, but it gives and they have a value proposition that attracts. So publishers out there, this is the main thread. How do you reach out? How do you do this? How do you address this thing that these guys are eating the cake? Well, that I find super interesting is that this, the Pangea Alliance is one example where main competitors, and I, I, looking at the list of the people in the Pangea Alliances, The Guardian, CNN, Financial Times, Reuters, and The Economist, for me that's quite big publishers and a massive reach. But what they do, they are heavy competitors. But in this area, they go together to join forces to share data, and they specifically say, if you go into Pangea Alliance uh, webpage, it says specifically they, it's to target and, and, and to uh, challenge uh, Google, Facebook, and Microsoft in what they provide in order to do the same thing. There's been seen before where competitors are going together in some way or another in alliances, and there are tremendous challenges in this. Uh, how to get it technology-wise to work, uh, what is the financial model and all this, so we will see if it works. It's fairly new, it's been around uh, for, for a few months, so we will see, but it's an interesting trend, for sure. There's another alliances, more out to trade a future, Haymark, S-Media, some others that are trying to do the same thing. Uh, also, again, to join forces, specifically to target uh, the threat from, from uh, the three that I mentioned earlier. Then, a little bit of a sidetrack. Hans, am I doing okay? Good. You're good. You, you're on the toes now. You're sure. Good. Good. Am I too fast? No. no. Good. Am I funny? No. No. I ask, if I ask my wife that, she says, no, it's not funny. It's uh, anyone. Uh, anyway, so, the AOL, Verizon bought AOL, or they merged. 
in the US. Verizon is one of the biggest telecom. And this is a little bit of a sidetrack. Just, just be with me on that. Verizon, they, don't, they have the huge telco. They don't have any own media. Uh, but they have a lot of data, which they recognize. AOL is a major publisher in the US. And that merger and the thoughts and the possibilities for Verizon and these guys now to reach targets and reach audience in a way that's unique is, of course, it's, it, I, I think it's just obvious. We're trying to crack, and I will talk a little bit more later on that when it comes to mobile, trying to crack. There is no cookies on mobiles, as we all know it. How do we do that? There are some fingerprinting, some IDs, trying to, for the, with the probability to do cross-target devices. Telco business, telco, telecom operators, they have all that data. Uh, I had a long discussion with uh, Schallenberg from, from, uh, from Deutsche Telekom yesterday. There's regulations, of course. There is, there's a lot of laws and regulations and privacy around this. So it's not just a matter of doing it. But in one way or another, that is the, that is the solution to the problem that the industry is facing on mobile. Um, I don't know how this is going to be done. I don't know when, but it will happen in one way or another. Uh, the telco business is a business under heavy pressure, uh, data, and uh, there is this uh, rumors about the Israeli company that will block all uh, ad blocks, block all the, the advertisements and banners and, and things in mobile. That won't happen in my world. But again, the telco, and keep an eye on that, how that will move over the upcoming years. Uh, I think something will happen there because they have all that data that everyone is m missing. So, interesting merger. What will happen out of that? I don't know. But uh, it's interesting to look at. A little bit of a sidetrack. So, back again. If you want to then start from that end, what the marketeers want. There were a few in the audience here. Uh, uh, now, when there are companies that want to spend money into this area, what do they want? Well, reach and frequency is important. Uh, create awareness, engagement times. Uh, this drives a new type of pricing models. The old uh, CPM, uh, CPL, whatever it is, uh, we see that uh, in UK there are some publishers that are st start charging after engagement time. Uh, because that's what the brand's people are used to. Uh, Premium and local inventory. If you spend your premium for the premium brands, the premium money goes in there. You don't want to be below the fold, or you don't want to be pulling it into a black hole where maybe 40% is shown. I'll get back to that a little bit later. But premium inventory and local data. Executable data, actionable data, is something that we talk about a lot. I'm not going to spend more time on data. There will be more people talking about later on. But just having terabytes of data today is not enough. You need actionable data. It's not the size of it, it's what you can do with it. That's the important thing. Then, you need metrics. You need to be able to measure your awareness. As I said, engagement time is a new one coming up. Viewability is another thing also that is very important. Uh, GPRs that you used to, maybe used works for video, but this is another landscape. I think there will be more measurements coming up as the things are constantly changing. And then you want to get into what we call then the benefits of programmatic buying, being in the driver's seats a little bit. So if we spend a, a second on that, how, uh, and there is not designed by ad form there, but I mean, this is the ecosystem. I know anyone, uh, is there anyone that's been a digital planner from the agencies? Anyone, anyone run any campaigns? There's no one in here that ever ran a campaign, but you'd, it's just di directors, it's your old managers here. Everyone that do, do, does the actual work is, is back in the office, or is that the case? Yeah, anyway, so, but this is, this is a normal process, as you can see. It takes 20, 25 days or something, and there's tons of emails going back, and there's the tags forwards, back and forth. This is the process that we've been used to. Yeah. But of course, Anything that can be digitalized will be digitalized. Anything that can be automized, automate, automated will be automated. So the buzzword of today is the automated guarantee. Um, in simple part, that is to cut away a lot of those steps in the background there. And have pre-certified formats, 
get the buyer into the driver's seat so that you can reach out for frequency and, and, and also be able to reach the right audience via the programmatic technologies. But it won't solve everything. There is still the uh, approvals uh, of uh, formats. There are still the, uh, the deals to be made, the prices, etc. But this is something that the industry is focusing on a lot. And it will be uh, uh, the future, as I see it. So the, the media planner uh, uh, is, is in some way dead, uh, rest in peace. Uh, and the planners and the buy side will be more focused on performance-based, uh, optimizing campaigns, getting the right reach, and getting the right performance out of it. So, um, then, back to the publisher side then. Uh, looking what's needed in order to drive this properly. The upper, bar, the upper part is more hygiene factors. Uh, that if brand money is going to move into this, this section, uh, you have to be, we have to get some way or another in control of the fraud or non-human interaction, as it's called. I saw some data that in ad exchanges in the US, 64% is non-human interactions. I can't believe it. 64% is non-human interactive. I mean, cut away 20%, then we're down to 40%. It's still enormous amount. And I don't know how much it is. I don't know anyone that could really say how much it is. But it is a problem for us in the industry that it's so much non-human interacted or fraud that we, I don't know, it's more politically right to say non-human interaction. Then the brand safety, of course, as you go in programmatic, uh, the part of doing that is the direct deals, the automated trading that we said earlier, to have direct deals to ensure that your banners are ending up at the right place. And then, the last one, which is also an industry problem, the guaranteed. Am I sounding too pessimistic, Hans? I mean, is, is this getting too pessimistic? No, I'm just putting all the problems in front of me. Yeah, yeah, okay, good, thank you, Hans. Um, the guaranteed viewability. Um, Interesting thing is that I could see, I, I, same thing uh, for, for a Nordic publisher, don't need to mention it, uh, but they've started to notice that their top banner, premium priced, top banner, has a viewability of 12%. The reason for that is that there's so much ad tech that is loaded. So when you go into the page, first content is loaded, the CMS is loading, you know, based upon your previous red articles, whatever it is, there's a lot of technology that needs to be loaded there. Then it starts loading the ads in one way or another, but then everyone is scrolled down. People start scrolling the first thing they do. So they get viewability of their top banner of less than 10, less than 15%. It doesn't work. There's no one's going to pay for that. That needs to be sorted out. There are technologies of responsive ads, whatever it is, but the way you load, the way that is, needs to be solved. Because you can't sell something that's not viewable. Um, then, of course, it is the below the fold and, what's, uh, and, and the standard things. But there are new mechanisms coming into this also. So viewability is something that, that needs to be. Um, so that's, yeah. Uh, then, ad blockers. Adblock Plus, there is a, you all followed and you see in the German uh, law court, there's two, two, two twice Adblocks. I say. Is there anyone working for Adblocks in here? No. Is there anyone working for this? Uh, and I, I, it's a little bit, you know, a source, uh, source uh, naked security. Anyone working for that publisher? That's a trusted source. Uh, just reflect a little bit on the name there for a second. Um, have you heard, it, it, when they decided to call this website, it's award-winning computer security news from Solfus, Naked Security. Uh, when they decided on that name, what was second best? What was the, what was the name they did not choose? Uh, they had the meeting where they were sitting and, okay, what do we call this trusted source of, you know, we're going to publish a lot of things. Yeah, right, uh, John, naked security, that's best. I'm just thinking, what was second best, uh, if, if that was the best? Anyway, I don't know how trusted it is, but it's kind of a little hot news that you are actually pay yourself through the Adblock Plus. Then it's getting completely strained. Ad blockers is something that the publisher must deal with. 
because if if again if the if if things are not shown people won't buy it yeah so then cross device there will be talk about that also but there are publishers that have 50% of their 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 traffic is going on mobiles and they can't really figure out how to monetize it that was the danish guy that also said they don't know how to monetize on it there are formats their reach and everything in there and i mean as it is it's quite interesting i mean this guy what's what's the matter of this guy up there i mean what's he looking at this is how it looks going back to my family when we're looking at tv i got two daughters and a wife um i know what you're thinking and it's exactly that hard it is with two teenage daughters and a wife uh, anyway so i just have to I, I cut my hair just to be nice when i come here so i i came back home and said and my wife said oh you cut your hair yeah what do you think it's short what, what do you mean? It's, is, it, is it okay? It's short. Then I was thinking, next time she comes with a dress and say, do I look fat in this? Uh, well, it's blue. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's wrong with this guy? I mean, that's, this is the reason. This is why cross device is growing. We're spending, on the mobile also, we're spending 85% in app. 15% in mobile web, but in overall time we are just spending and it's increasing That needs to be sorted out So the mobile market is this is the year of mobile have you heard it before every year the last six years has been the year of mobile uh, In World Congress in Spain. I was there um, three things talking about now is hyperlocation uh, It is the content to reach people with the right message and not with a format that sucks what it's been taking is the online formats and just squeezed it into the small screen. And if it's too little, then wrap it into cubes so you could swipe it. That's not the solution to it. There must be formats and creatives for the mobile that make sense based upon what you do, where you are. And in all, get it then with programmatic because that's the only way to, to solve it. That's the hot thing right now. In the long end, I think, again, as I said, have a look at what the teleco telecom company is doing and how they're moving into this space, because they have the solution to it. They just have some problems executing and doing it. So, then, full creative license. Uh, again, creativity must come into here. Uh, there are web pages that looks like, I heard a term said, uh, it looks like a Nasdaq car. You know those cars that are driving in, in the US? Uh, and I couldn't get it first what they meant with that, a Nasdaq car, but it is so much stickers on the cars, you can't see it. It's just, a, uh, you can't see into each individual of it. Some web pages uh, and some publishers do have a, a completely swamped with the advertisements and banners. I think we will see a trend less uh, less banners, less parts of it, but more intrusive. Uh, takeovers and all those things as brand money comes in. But there are tons of formats. And, and uh, just to uh, show uh, one format and one campaign that we ran together with uh, Burberry, which is quite interesting also. Burberry sell a few things online, but they are not their main channel. They have their shops. They did a coordinated branding campaign um, massively over Europe in five large uh, Germany, UK, Spain, Italy, and, and um, France. Uh, they ran this campaign, campaign all synced up. Do you know, anyone knows who that is? This kid over there? It's always women that knows this. <laughs> it's a Beckham. Yeah, it's Beckham's son. Yeah, right. Then you know that. Everyone's, yeah. So he's, he's doing the Burberry. Um, and they ran this uh, with a frequency cap of five on Yahoo Premium. They had uh, over uh, almost 10 million completed videos. Uh, they have engagement rates that were at least double up. And it was synced. And if there were nothing in there creating leads or whatever it was, it was pure awareness, pure branding. Very good, big success. Yahoo is now making that format available for, for others also. Now we'll see if this works. Responsive InView is fully programmatically compatible and is an industry first format from AdForm. InView launches out a normal inline text when it comes into view. If less than 50% of the ad is visible, the video will pause automatically, holding its position and only resuming once more than 50% of the ad is once again on screen. This is a polite format and audio is activated upon mouse over. 
This format is fully responsive, even while videos are playing, and gives you a wealth of exciting new outstream video possibilities. With the completion of the video, the ad shrinks and vanishes back into the page's normal layout. So with that, uh, the creatives are um, important, and there are tons of them. Uh, and it's a matter to get into the game because that drives engagement. That's what brand money needs and requires to drive engagement and attention. Uh, and technology can bring that. So I think we're going to see a lot on the publisher side and a lot of work there where these guys are getting into play. Um, <clears throat> and that's what's needed in order to, to drive the, uh, the money and, and take the piece of the pie. Um, I think I'm done there. You've been waving with the five minutes for a while now, and uh, I'm, I'm available for questions. Uh, Hans, uh, was it okay? Yeah. I did fine. Thank you, Hans. You're, a, you're such a lovely person. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I don't like you, Scott, so much, but I like you, Hans. That's good. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to translate that. Anyway. Yeah, I'm getting confused here. So, so um, yeah. Come up here. Ask Thanks a lot. Mats Pedersen.